करना January 28th, 2022, the Batman figures from McFarlane Toys became readily available amongst many retailers in North America. I expected the community to react with disappointment, but instead, it was met with cheer and praise, despite all the glaring quality control issues. My Instagram feed is full of Batman mods, people hoping to gain whatever they can from this mediocre figure, and the toy reviewers on YouTube. They're afraid to speak out. They're afraid McFarlane won't send them free figures anymore. Well, I don't give a damn. In the past two years, McFarlane's had the DC license. I've been silenced. We have a channel now. But it's a big place. I can't be everywhere. When the notification hits the sky, it's not just a call, it's a warning. To anyone still defending this mediocre company, they think I'm hating. I am the hate. I hate Todd McFarlane. I think many of his business practices are fucking terrible, and he should be nowhere near the toy making industry because quite frankly, he has no idea what the hell he's doing. A good example of this is his DC Multiverse line. Probably one of the worst toy lines out right now, but I feel like I'm the only one who actually talks about this stuff. You know, the fact that most of them are fucking dog shit, because quite frankly, no one has the fucking cojones to talk about McFarlane's mistakes. So let me make this clear, I, I don't care. So let me make this clear, I don't give a shit about him or his shitty company, I'm gonna talk about why it sucks and why you as DC fans should want more and demand more from this guy. But before I even begin to explain why I hate the DC Multiverse line so much, I feel like I have to answer some- I think I can predict what most of the comments are gonna look like. Comments that say I'm wrong, I'm stupid, I should kill myself, my channel's mid, I'm mid. All heartwarming comments like that. So let's get this out of the way before I start arguing with children in the comments. You just hate the line because it's DC. OBJECTION! I don't hate DC. Quite the opposite, actually. Batman's my second favorite superhero of all time. The Batman and The Dark Knight are some of my favorite movies ever made. In fact, my love for Batman and DC is the reason why I'm so pissed off. They're only $20. I'm not gonna excuse a shit figure just because it's $20. $20, although it might not seem that much to kids, is still a bit of money. The price doesn't matter. What matters is if it's worth the price, and somewhat leaves me satisfied. And as we're about to see, that is not the case with this figure. How do you let Aqua do the bare minimum and you can't? It's better than paying $100 for a Mayfix. Mmm, I don't know man, looks like a shit argument to me. Just because the McFarlane's cheaper than the Mayfix doesn't mean it's a better figure. More affordable, yes, but it's not even worth the price. When Marvel Legends were $20, you get a pair of hands, build a figure piece, and then some. With McFarlane, you're lucky to get a pair of hands. Oh, but my mistake, it comes with a character card and a stand. Yeah, really worth $20! Is money even a problem for most of you? If you're an average class working adult, you can probably afford one Mayfex a month at least. And don't even get me started on kids these days. Yeah, you, kids, the ones who are mostly watching my videos. I bet if you ask your mom nicely, she'll buy you an entire goddamn house. Look at this kid on TikTok. He got a whole Sentinel Miles Morales Spider-Man for Easter. Fucking Easter. What, do kids get hot toys for President's Day? Shit, what's Christmas like for them? So most adults can get a Mayfex, that was pretty obvious, but now most kids can get a Mayfex if they just ask. D yeah, I don't want to hear this argument ever again. <laughs> the term kids also applies to all you 15 year olds too, so don't think that you're safe. You 
fucking shit bags. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, I know most people can't afford a Mafex and that the $20 versions are their only option. And that's why I'm pissed off. For many people, this crap is their only option and they have no choice but to buy them. You want a nice, affordable Nightwing that looks good? Too fucking bad, you gotta pay almost $100 for the Mafex. Why do you hate people who buy them? No, I don't hate people who like McFarlane toys. To be serious for a minute, I'm just kind of up playing myself for this video. It's just me expressing my problems with this toy line. I'll have no problems with you if you enjoy the figures that McFarlane puts out. So please, wherever you are on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, don't give people crap just because they like the figures. It's a total dick move. I'm just gonna make fun of McFarlane and why I don't like his figures. Before we start, I gotta make one thing clear. This is my opinion. This video is mostly made for entertainment purposes. I don't have, I don't hate Todd. I don't have any personal vendetta against him or something. I don't hate him as a person. I don't hate people who buy McFarlane toys. A couple of friends of mine actually like McFarlane's figures. Well, okay, not like, they buy them. And that's completely fine. So you can agree with me, disagree with me, just don't fucking harass people who like McFarlane toys. If you're actively going around, let's say for instance, you're on TikTok, you're, you're on there all day, constantly picking fights with collectors just because they like McFarlane toys and disagree with you. You're a fucking bitch. If you know, you know. So don't take anything I say in this video too seriously. Everyone's opinion is valid. Now let's talk about why your figures suck. You hear me, Todd? Your figures fucking suck! Here's a list of DC Multiverse figures I found on the internet. Do you notice something peculiar about this specific list? Of the 49 characters here, fucking 22 of them are Batman. The other 16 are Batman related, which means of these figures, a total of 11 of them are not related to Batman. So you're probably wondering, wow, that's a lot of fucking Batman. And yeah, you're right, that is a lot of fucking Batman. Well, the reason that there's so many fucking Batman is because Todd McFarlane loves Batman so goddamn much, he decides to put five in every single wave. When I heard Todd was gonna put a bunch of Batman in his DC Multiverse line, I expected, you know, multiple characters from the Batman mythos, Two-Face, Penguin, Mr. Freeze, but no, he really meant just Batman. We don't even have like a regular comic book Wonder Woman. Comic Wonder Woman, pff, who the fuck needs that? We have Batman, we got Arkham Batman, we got Animated Series Batman, Batman Who Laughs Batman, Gold Label Batman, Flashpoint Batman, Batman Earth One. We don't have a Doomsday by the way, but we have Batman Earth One. Holy shit, there's so many Batman. Oh my God, there's so many fucking Batman. Oh my God, fucking stop. You know, you're absolutely right. We can't make enough Batman. So in order to make up for it, we're going to make the Apology Batman. It's the same Batman we did before, except he has a sad face. We're also going to make it a Walmart exclusive gold label because I know the collectors love that. Todd McFarlane is stuck in the past and is still using tactics that were outdated years ago. His gold label figures solely exist to be sought after by collectors, except they never sell because they know they're a piece of shit. Just to throw some examples out there, this Arkham Joker is nothing different from the original, except for the fact that it's just spray painted gold. Who asked for this? No one. Todd just thought he could make a quick buck by having collectors squirm around for it because they think it's gonna be rare. That is quite literally the only purpose this figure has. Apparently this figure isn't even a gold label. It's like a platinum edition or something. I, I, don't, I don't really care. A more recent example is this hazmat suit Batman. No one really liked the hazmat suit in the first place, but they made a gold label version where his symbol lights up? What? A light up symbol. You mean that thing Hasbro did with Iron Man and nobody liked that? Ow. Yeah, let's just do that ourselves, because it worked so well the first time. Number one victory royale. Something's in my- oh. As another recent example, they released two Catwomen spaced off the movie. These are their only Catwoman figures in the entire line, by the way. I just, I just thought I'd let you know that. One has a mask that isn't accurate to the movie at all. It's a puffy piece of shit. The second version is unmasked and the head looks absolutely atrocious. And McFarlane decides to release it again, but with a movie accurate face 
and it's a gold label. What a shitty move. Fuck everyone who bought the inaccurate ones, you know? They're fucking screwed because the one they bought is now updated in less than a year, and now it's a fucking gold label. You know, that's, that's some fucking high class marketing right there. You're really showing you care about your fans, Todd. No one fucking does chase figures anymore. You know who still does chase figures? Blind bag companies and Funko Pops. Marvel Legends doesn't have chase figures anymore. The closest they get is exclusives, which is a completely different thing. McFarlane has exclusive figures as well, as if the fucking gold label wasn't enough. How about instead of releasing an exclusive figure, you get it right the fucking first time? My guy, you had since 2020 to get it right. As if the lion didn't already suck, now you're making some harder to find? We're not fucking Funko Pop collectors, we're DC collectors. So the bottom line is that the gold label fucking sucks, and it's a big slap in the face to collectors everywhere. Gold labels are fucking bullshit! So I, I, I think you get the point. McFarlane's gold label sucks donkey dookie, but that's not even the worst part. Gold labels aside, they still make variants of figures. What am I talking about? Let's get a look at McFarlane's latest failure. The movie Batman figures. Yeah, the Batman figure they released for the movie. Or should I say Batmans? Batman? They're the same person, but... Batman. Yeah, let's just go with Batman. Well, these Batmen are about as useful to me as a piece of tissue. A used piece of tissue. And it wasn't used for someone's nose. <laughs> We'll talk about his more glaring problems later. Here's everything this figure comes with. He comes with a grappling hook accessory, a stand, and a character card. You get only three things with this fucking beast. You want a Robert Pattinson head? Well, you're out of luck. You have to buy the unmasked variant. It is the exact same figure as before, except it comes with an unmasked head that looks like a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> It looks about as much as Robert Pattinson as Jared Leto is a good joker. Meaning not at all, not a fucking chance. How did they fuck up the head this bad? I don't even think a repaint could save it, it's beyond saving. You know you fucked up when the Spin Master has a better sculpt than yours. I would never buy this figure. In fact, I shouldn't have to buy it in the first place. This head should have just been an accessory with the first figure, not a completely separate release. Man, what a slimy fucking practice. You know who used to do this? Diamond Select. And even they don't do that anymore. Look at Marvel Select Spider-Man figure. You get all this shit, all these hands. And then you go back to mid Farland over here. They don't even have the generosity to include a second head. They did this with the Bruce Wayne figure as well. Here's his unmasked head. God, this shit's so bad. Did you know that when they first revealed this figure, McFarlane's Instagram page actually deleted the post because every single person knew that this head fucking sucked. But then they released exactly the same shit, only he has a little scarf shit covering his mouth. Would you pay 20 more dollars just for that difference? I know I wouldn't. Variants like this are fucking shit. I shouldn't have to buy another figure to have one accessory that didn't come with the original. They could have easily thrown in a few things with this figure. Like, where's his extra hands? He has none. Where is it? Oh, you're kidding. So in order to get just one extra hand, you have to buy the bike accessory? That is hilarious. I almost want to laugh. It sounds like some kind of sick, cruel joke. But that's actually what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to buy this shit in order to get an extra hand. Why couldn't something this small just be included with the original figure in the first place? So if you just wanted a Batman figure with the bare minimum of an extra fucking hand, you have to buy the figure, you have to buy the bike. If you want an extra head, you have to buy a separate figure. Hey bro, listen, I'm letting you know right now, I'm not paying that much for a figure that can't pose for shit, barely looks like him in the movie, and comes with essentially nothing. At a price point of just $50 if you want an extra hand, I might as well just buy the new SH figure arts. Or if I want the quintessential best Batman figure, I'm getting the Mezco or Hot Toys. If you have this figure because you can't afford any of the high premium ones, that's fine. But the minute you try to tell me that this figure is better than all of those other ones just because it's $20, I'm gonna assume that your Jordans are fake. <laughs> You need that extra hand, by the way. Without it, Batman's just stuck with this fucking karate chop hand for his right arm. McFarlane makes so many pointless variations of figures. Unnecessary repaints. Inaccurate figures to be re-released more accurate. It's just a fucking shit show. I rest my case. Now that we're finally done talking about McFarlane's Batman fetish, it's now finally time to talk about the actual figures. The 
the original sculpt. It's something desired, no, expected by most action figure collectors. So much to the point where whenever a company like Hasbro decides to reuse a body over and over, we get frustrated. However, if these original molds look anything like McFarlane's, I think I'd rather take the reused Bucky Cat molds from Hasbro. Because these McFarlane figures are the most ugliest pieces of shit I've ever seen. They're not aesthetically pleasing in the slightest. They all look disproportionate and fucking gross. First off, every single figure is so goddamn thick. This is due to Todd's mentality of superheroes being ultra buff. Shit, I didn't know that applied to the fucking movie figures. Let's get a look at this reverse flash. Skinny arms, big ass chest and thighs, but a skinny torso too? McFarlane's proportions suck. Still not convinced? Are you thinking, oh, it looks perfectly fine. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, let's take a look at this new flash figure. On this figure, the big chest syndrome is even worse. Look at how fucking massive it is. All of that coupled with the little ass head, the skinny ass limbs, and wide ass hips. There's no getting around it. All McFarlane figures look like this. And to all of you who will still defend this figure in particular, there is nothing you can say that will convince me that these chest arrows, or whatever the fuck they are, look good. Look at him in the box, bro. He doesn't even look good in a pose. On top of most McFarlane's being white as shit, they look disgusting because of how overly detailed they are. This is the exact reason why I said I'd prefer Marvel Legends reuse. Because at the end of the day, they're proportionate and actually try to look like they're from the comic book rather than some weird uncanny valley realistic but not world that McFarlane tries to push on us. Martian Manhunter has this extremely stylized like animated series type head but with extremely textured green skin that almost looks like it has pores on it and an extremely realistic physique. Jesus Christ, you don't gotta go that far. Less is more. Even when Marvel Legends gets more extreme with their sculpts, they don't go fucking all out like it's some photorealistic type thing. Even when Diamond Select gets a little more realistic, it matches the style that they're going for rather than this. And I know some people are gonna be like, oh, those are Marvel, you're just a Marvel shill. Okay, well, let's get a look at how McFarlane should be done. Let's get a look at DC Essentials. Proportionate, has articulation that actually works, and has details where necessary and not going overboard. And by the way, they have a regular Wonder Woman, because unlike some people who think we want a gazillion versions of fucking Batman, DC Essentials had their priorities straight, streamlined, great character selection, perfect. They did all that while being 7 inches, which by the way, is a shitty scale. Why the fuck are these figures 7 inches tall? Because yes, McFarlane bought the rights to DC Multiverse, a 6 inch line, but decided to make them 7 inches to fit his shitty scaling. The only time they've ever used the 6 inch license that they bought was for these Adam West figures. McFarlane is the reason we will never have an affordable 6 inch DC scale. And the only alternative is Mafex. You can't even get DC icons anymore because that line is dead. On top of that, McFarlane isn't even good at scaling his own figures together. Take a look at the Justice League where Batman's taller than Superman and Martian Manhunter appears to be the shortest. Or how about movie Justice League where the Flash towers over Batman. So on top of the figures looking absolutely horrendous, they don't even fit in well with each other. Why would I ever buy this line? But I know there's still going to be some people still defending McFarlane even after all that. You may have some good counter arguments, but here's where shit gets real. This is where McFarlane's tomfoolery is inexcusable, no matter if you're a fan of him or not. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about... This one's pretty self-explanatory. McFarlane's quality control is a fucking joke. Maybe I can talk about how most figures' arms pop off really easily. Maybe I can talk about this exclusive dark side whose arm is notorious for breaking, but I'm not because there's already a great video on this by Wellum Customs. Check him out. I love this guy. He's awesome. I looked online, I did some research. I kind of studied everyone else's review on this figure. I noticed a lot of people when they do like the articulation joints, they always focus on this arm only. I've seen other people, their, left arm, their right arm popped off as well. People have been complaining about it. Look at this. See this guy? And another one. And this guy right here, look at him. And here's my good friend Mikey. With every single McFarlane figure he owns falling apart like it's put together with Elmer's glue.
It's not even the fact that most figures fall apart. It's when they straight up mess up, like the painful release that this movie Batman figure had. To explain this whole shabakle, I contacted my friend Tizify, who's going to explain everything. <coughs> Get out of here! <coughs> All right, so Mr. Criminal, he told me to call him. That's not what this is about. What this is about is Batman. Oh, you like Batman, huh? Oh, well, you might notice something about my Batman. When this figure came out, for me and a lot of people. I ordered mine on Amazon. When I got my Batman, you know, he looks okay. Well, now he looks okay. Well, I'm gonna provide a picture here, but originally, this ab piece was flipped upside down. So it looked like this, but it was right side up. So when you ordered it from Amazon when it first came out, or pre-ordered it, it came, the ab piece was upside down. So what I had to do is I had to take this figure apart and fix it. But uh, it's not a 100% done deal because also you notice there's no collar on mine. And the reason for that was because it had this piece of garbage collar on it. This is the collar that comes with the unmasked figure. And as you can see, it doesn't look right. I'm with this collar, so I, I fucking, I took that off. So now I have a Batman that's uh, missing a collar piece. And I'm not gonna go on eBay and pay 20 bucks for one. That's just insane. Batman looks, I mean, he looks okay. Criminal doesn't like the figure. I think he's all right. He's definitely uh, interesting to say the least. Now, this is how he scales with six inch figures. Inches, but he towers everyone. I know he's a seven inch figure, but there's no reason why he should be towering a six inch figure. He's almost eight inches. I'm gonna grab the movie Venom figure and you're gonna see how tall he is. Whoa, 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 would you look at that. He's not even got, he's wide stanced right now. Well, actually that's about as tall as he's gonna go. But there's no reason why he should be like eight inches. He's as tall as movie Venom. But the thing is, he doesn't even pose that well either. But uh, this is Criminal's video so he can explain everything to you. But mine came messed up and he wanted me to show you that mine is now fixed, but it still doesn't have a collar, so it's messed up. Spider Tiz, aka Tizify, and my Batman is fucked. The soup is cold and the salad is hot. How is that even possible? Not only was the quality control really bad on this movie Batman, but it's been really bad throughout the entire line since its creation, and there seems to be no signs of change. Those are the reasons why I think McFarlane's DC Multiverse lines suck. And I'm not alone. Okay, the reason I hate McFarlane toys is because of the shit articulation. Like, the fuck? Can't even crunch his chest forward and shit like this. Yeah, and also their weird body proportions. Like, look at this shit. <laughs> like, are you fucking serious? Like, what the fuck, McFarlane? Weird hand gestures and the lack of interchangeable hands. I mean, look at this guy. What is he holding? Like, Diet Pepsi? They only come with two sets of interchangeable hands. Give us a full array. Give us fists. You have the money for it. Holy crap, a new DC action figure line? I hope it scales well with my Marvel Legends. <sighs> Mick Farley. Look, I love Marvel, personally, but I also love DC. And since I gave Marvel Legends a try, so I might as well give McFarlane a try. But like Green Goblin once said, I offered you friendship and you spat on my face. McFarlane just sucks, and they're so hard to handle, like me. They just make me want to do unspeakable things. Now we just get him into a pose and... Ah, oh, shit. If you are justice, please do not lie. 
What is the price for your blind eye? Spartan Criminal has asked me to tell him why the DC Multiverse line is bad. And no will I. It can be poo poetic or blind. But when it's denied, it is violence you might find in the horrible face sculpts. <laughs> This Batman Beyond figure, in my opinion, I think I got a decent price. I got it for eight bucks. <sighs> it could use dice, so that's the main problem with farms. They never have dice for what count crush for, especially with this new Batman figure. My green, it it, it, it popped up. It, 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 it. <laughs> McFarlane is the side eye. What is the point of this side eye? What is he looking at? Is he depressed or something? What are you looking at? Okay, so here is what I despise about the McFarlane line. Like, you're paying upwards of $20 uh, at most. And if you're lucky, that that's what you get. That, that That's all you get. Like, I, like, they count the stand and the card as an accessory. Like, like, I bet you Todd is like laughing his ass off in his office that he stole $22.95 from a kid in like Colorado or something. Because like sometimes... 75% of these figures are swole or hella thick. Look how they did my man Nightwing. What the hell? Fuck McFarlane, bro. I fucking hate McFarlane. They're fucking ass, bro. Why they do their figure like that, bro? Fuck McFarlane. If you will break, please do not lie. What is the price? For looking exactly like Krang. Uh, thanks for sending me those clips, guys. You guys are fucking weird, man. Anyway, don't go anywhere because we're not done yet. I saved this part for last. Because it's kind of more serious. You ever wonder where all the problems with the DC Multiverse line is rooted from? Well, we have to talk about why this line is so bad. And that's the person who's running it. Now, like I said, don't attack Todd McFarlane, but I'm going to talk about stuff he said in a recent interview. An interview with Shardimus Prime. I don't watch Shardimus Prime, but I saw this interview because some of the stuff Todd McFarlane says in this video is very questionable to say the least. So to start off, this interview is kind of a mess. Todd just goes off on all these analogies and stuff. He's pretty much the only one talking throughout the entire interview. Shardimus Prime listens like he's uncomfortable, which is kind of funny. <laughs> and yeah, he does get interrupted quite a lot. The life raft over here, like you're, yeah. you're, you're kind of- Well, I think, the, I think, the, I think the cons We're not gonna focus on what I think about Shardimus Prime. We're here to talk about what Todd said. So to start off, Shardimus Prime asks Todd, why don't the figures come with the guns? And Todd explains that it's out of his control, that's DC's rule, and he can't do anything about it. Okay, cool. You didn't have to go on two paragraphs on why, but that's still a cool answer. Most of the questions are pretty straightforward, until we get to this part. Answer to this other question of why so many Batmans, right? There's like so many Batman figures, so, and I... I and I'm assuming... I, mean, I, I, I think it's twofold, really. I mean, one is the easy one. It's Batman. Who, I, like, who's the biggest character in DC? It's Batman. It's not Superman. It's not Flash. It's not Wonder Woman. It's Batman. It's Batman. It's Batman. Batman is one of my favorite superheroes of all time. I love this character about as much as I love Spider-Man, if not equal so. I don't want whatever this shit is, though. To even suggest that Batman is the only profitable character from DC Comics is just fucking bullshit. Whether you like it or not, Superman is the face of DC. He's the face of superheroes in general. Likewise, Wonder Woman is the face of female superheroes. Yet they only have a fraction of figures that Batman has in the entire DC multiverse line. Wonder Woman has yet to get a figure of her classic costume. Keep this in mind. But for now, let's talk about why people like Batman so much. His villains. People like DC villains. It's one of the best part of DC Comics. Yet you're only making Batman. Going back to character selection, it's horrendous. You made a figure of Cyborg from the original Teen Titans without making any of the other team members. You made this version of Superwoman and not Supergirl? Why? So now a lot of them are just that some of them are just really cool looking. What? Right? And they happen to also be Batmans because when we're looking at the array of characters that are in DC, a lot of their characters are also 
Batman, right? So they don't have they don't have a hundred you know different Wonder Woman's you know, but you know they they have a bunch of Batman. Just in case you didn't get what he said, he's given a list of multiple DC characters by DC themselves. So he can make Wonder Woman, he can make the rest of the Teen Titans, he can make Supergirl, but he chooses not to. In favor of another Batman. You got a bunch of, what do you mean, Marvel got a bunch of Spider-Mans now, right? Marvel Legends does indeed have a lot of Spider-Mans, but they're mostly of suits we actually want. Not a pointless McDonald's Batman. And it's not like Marvel Legends just makes Spider-Mans, they make a lot of Spider-Man's villains, while at the same time making more figures of more Marvel characters. Now, some of them are pretty fucking terrible, but at least there's a variety. You can have a shelf of Marvel villains. Can't really do that with McFarlane's selection. So why does he choose all these god-awful designs? Why? In all honesty, I'm not even looking at half of them as Batman. I'm just going, that one's cool, right? Don't put, Don't tell me any names. Just that one's cool, that one's cool, that one's cool. And then they say, yeah, that one's called... Whatever. God damn it. So the reason you chose all these Batmans is not because you're a fan of their stories or about how iconic they are. You just think it looks cool? I don't think I have to explain why. That is a fucking problem. God damn it. Let's just move on. I find uh, Batman to be my favorite uh, DC character. So yeah, I can see how <laughs> I'm one of them that falls for for picking up multiple Batmans. Don't encourage this, Russ. Are interchange more interchangeable hands. Like, I like having interchangeable sets of hands. I think I've seen some recently announced. He goes on to say how not many figures have that much articulation because he thinks it looks ugly. Most McFarlane fans know that this is a common problem with McFarlane and how he thinks action figures should be. He also talks about how he won, like, the best-selling toy line in North America and Canada, which, um... Not to be rude, but I find that extremely hard to believe. And the only reason I bring this up in the first place is because Todd brings it up multiple times. Go watch the interview yourself because the man does not let it go. He wants you to know he won that award. Say that, in, not not in a, in a bragging way, but in a proud way, but just in a factual way, and I can talk about it a little bit, that we just got an award that the DC Multiverse was the biggest selling action figure line in North America, in both the US and in Canada. We were, we were number one. Now, why, uh, why? A couple, I think a couple of reasons. I think one, because again, oh, we've, been able to maintain, we've been able to maintain price, right? I think- He then proceeds to talk about this for about 30 minutes with plenty of analogies. Okay, this is the big one. Shardimus asks why there's a lack of female figures in the line, and Todd's answer is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, here's how it works. You got you got superhero toys sell here. Mm -hmm. Male. Male superhero toys. Oh boy. Here we go. I'm not saying that I can't sell a female superhero, which I can. What I'm saying is that I can't do an entire line of four figures in one series of nothing but females and put it in the boys action aisle, but not at the boys action figure aisle. There's a reason why it's called boys action figure aisle. And if you don't believe me, then you don't remember that either A, you were a nine-year-old boy and or that you actually have a son because it goes sort of something like this. I've said it before. Your 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 son is comes home and he gets straight A's for a year and you go you know what we're gonna we're gonna buy you a gift your 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 dad and I are going out and we're gonna we're gonna bring you a gift we're gonna go we're gonna bring you action figures even and you go out and you look at mom and dad are in the aisle and they go hey any Batman yep not getting it Superman yep not gonna get it Captain America Hulk fighting nope. I'm going to get me this girl figure. And then you're going to come home and you're going to give it to your kid. And you're, he's going to be super anxious because he's been waiting all day. And then you're going to pull out the bag and you're going to give it to him. And he's going to go, mm. now, they have any superhero dudes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, did they have any robots? Oh, yeah. Watch a robot. Should have seen it. Monsters, of course. Creatures, yes. Military, yes. Okay, I had all of that. And what about dinosaurs, aliens? Oh, shit, you should have seen the pigs. 
<laughs> and you got me the female. But somewhere along the line, serial killers begin at a certain spot. <laughs> oh so, my God. <laughs> some, we haven't evolved. I'm sorry, what? First of all, that analogy was so long and terrible. Because that rarely happens today. Kids don't care about action figures, they care about what the new game is. And for the kids who do collect action figures, they usually tell their parents what figure they want. Because you know how kids are today, they just ask their parents for like a hundred dollar figure and they just give it to them, no questions asked. And what Todd said could not have been more false. All right, now you listen here, hipster. Todd McFarlane's been in the industry for 30 years. And what he's saying ain't wrong at all. Them little boys like male and action figures and you know it. Whoa, my bad. Didn't mean to offend Todd McFarlane's fans. I'll try to keep it on the low, bro. Clearly you guys are the much older fanatics, yo. So I'll cut it out and make like an ice cream and split. That was just in case someone in the comments tries to accuse me of being woke or something like that. But anyway, yeah, it's pretty true. Boys do like male figures. But wait, Todd's not talking about little boys. And if you don't believe me, then you don't remember that either A, you were a nine-year-old boy and or that you actually have a son. So that whole analogy wasn't for little boys buying his figures. That's him trying to say that adult collectors don't want female figures because their nine-year-old selves wouldn't want it or something. Todd, buddy, amigo. I'm not doubting all you've done for the industry, but with time comes change. The toy industry is not the same as it was 30 years ago. Collectors today love female action figures and even advocate for more being released. And the female figures you do release are in questionable costumes, or you made them out of obligation. You even have collectors like me who have shit like this in their house. Or higher end collectors who are willing to spend almost $300 on a Hot Toys female figure or a statue. Also, if you are talking about kids, Saying that a nine-year-old boy wouldn't want a female figure at all is also false. I can't speak for other collectors, but I remember when Dark Knight Rises came out, I really wanted the Catwoman figure because she was a major part in the movie. I wanted characters like her, Ahsoka Tano, Android 18, Invisible Woman. So forgive me because that's why I can't take your analogy that seriously. But let's say that everything that I've just said is complete bullshit and that you still believe Todd McFarlane is in the right here. Well, there's no excusing this comment. But somewhere along the line, serial killers begin at a certain spot. <laughs> okay, so your excuse for not making female figures is because it'll turn your nine-year-old kid into a serial killer. How do you go from not making toys to serial killers? Todd, I don't think it's that serious. If a kid got a female figure, I don't think it would be the end of the world. To even suggest that that would happen, to even suggest that you're doing us a favor not making them because you'll create more serial killers, dude. What the hell was that? So after this extensive interview, which I did cut a lot out by the way, this thing's an hour long, this not only showed why many of the problems with McFarlane toys is so rampant, it also shows that most of those problems come from Todd himself and his mindset on how his figures should be made. He seems to not care about the consumer at all, only focusing on what's cool and what's cool to him. That is why I think McFarlane Toys and the DC Multiverse line is the worst line out right now. I'll never buy a figure because this company is so mid, you might as well change your name from McFarlane to Midfarlane. <sighs> Oh crap, we didn't even finish the interview. I wonder what he says to end it off. We're building a platform that's going live uh, for uh, NFTs. And Action figure NFTs? You mean this? Look, I have a McFarlane NFT right now. What are you talking about? Then there's another group that's like, no, you live in a, in a, in a, in a place where you have access to everything, but it's called Japan and, it's, and it's, you live in Tokyo and your apartment literally is 600 square feet. Because, yeah. okay, you can't have a big collection. It is impossible. You don't have the space, mm -hmm. right? If you got two big statues, that's it. You either choose between the two statues or your wife at that point, right? Those are because you don't have room for both. <laughs> so, so now you go, oh, man. So your only other choice then, even for that guy living in the middle of, of, of Tokyo, is to say, mm, well, maybe I can have a collection, but it was gonna have to be digital, right? So again, I'm what kind of fucking example is that? People who live in Tokyo, Japan can't have figure collections? Japan, the city that has an entire city block dedicated to action figures. Why would people in Japan want your shitty figures 
when they have all this high-end collectibles, and in an NFT format no less. This is a long shot, but for anyone watching who happens to live in Tokyo or in Japan, is what Todd McFarlane said true? Can you not have collections? Please comment below what you think because I'm genuinely curious. Action figure NFTs, God. That's what's gonna make me a serial killer. NFTs I've seen is like basically like digital collectibles, right? Oh like no, have, shard I stop. I think I have the very first video. Oh god, right? no, like, just stop. Like that, like that could be an NFT, right? Like wow, so that was all my thoughts on McFarlane toys. Despite me having a pretty strong opinion on them, I don't own a figure. So why is that? Because they fucking suck! Because they fucking suck! Because they fucking suck! <laughs> McFarlane's shitty proportions, the lack of fucking quality control, these figures fucking suck! They suck so bad I wouldn't even give them to Loki as a chew toy! Dude, there's nothing I would ever do with a McFarlane figure. Like, yeah, sure, I can put him with my collection, but I can't even do fucking that, because they're seven inches tall. What am I gonna do, put him with my diamond selects? It's blatantly disrespectful, man. I just want a cool Batman figure, I had to get the fucking Mafex, which is fantastic, but the fact that that's my only option for a great Batman figure is just bad. I'm not saying Mattel didn't fuck up, but they were at least getting better, trying to improve. McFarlane isn't making any improvements ever. In fact, they just announced another Batman and Superman. Now, don't fucking harass McFarlane or anything. Don't harass anyone who likes McFarlane toys. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, I don't, I fuck. I'm just saying, I fucking hate the line. I don't own a single figure from it, and I never will. Solemnly swear on God, heaven and earth, every universe, every multiverse, the fucking quadrillion first, I will never own a McFarlane figure because they fucking suck. Well, that was just my thoughts on McFarlane toys. Um, but they need a lot to improve, man. Whether or not they will improve is all up to him, all up to his sh fucking team. I don't know. I'm pissed off. It's sad that this is the only option for most DC collectors. Either that or just collect Funko Pops, which, um, yeah, I, I don't like Funko Pops. I know there's many people defending McFarlane toys. That's completely fine. But one thing I want to leave you with is Hasbro made some of the worst figures known to mankind when they first got the Marvel license. The only reason they improved is that the fans like you and me, complained, begged, asked for improvements, and they delivered. Now Marvel Legends is probably the most well-known action figure line out right now. As the consumer, it's important to acknowledge when they're good, yeah, but it's also important to acknowledge each company's flaws. If we ignore the flaws these company makes with their products, they'll never get the message to improve. Our only hope for McFarlane Toys to improve is to let him know, hey, we don't want 7-inch figures, we want better quality control. Bottom line is, power to McFarlane collectors. Don't ignore the flaw. I don't know, fuck. If you like McFarlane toys, don't convince other people to like him. If you don't like McFarlane toys, don't convince people to not like him or bully anyone else. That's just a fucking dick thing to do. Whatever your stance on McFarlane toys are, what really matters is if the consumer is happy. I'm not, many are, doesn't matter. I'm running out of things to say, so thanks for watching, guys. You'll probably never see me review a McFarlane figure. I don't want that shit in my house, but that's just me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I Ooh, it's time for my anal evacuation. Fuck. Joy. Don't be coy. Have fun with the toy. Enjoy. Oh shit. <sighs> shit. <laughs> Oh. <sighs>
Hello, spider criminal. It's me, the Riddler. I've been trying to reach you for so long, desperately waiting for an answer and nothing. Until now, I have a gift for you. For me? Yes, yes, a gift for you. And all I ask in return for this gift is that you review it and upload it to your channel. Or what, you incel cuck? And if you don't, that collection that you hold oh so dear to your heart, I will destroy it. Oh shit, shit. You might even like it. I know I did. No! It's me, Goku! Boy, looks like Criminal has gotten himself in a bit of trouble. It's gonna take a lot for him to defeat him. Don't worry, Criminal, you can do it and win! Although, you're not a Super Saiyan. Uh, anyway, next time on Spider-Criminal, why McFarlane's the Batman figure sucks! Don't miss it, okay?